been there? I have not. Have any of you ever been to Williamsburg, Virginia and seen the colony, you know, the whole setup there? We, we went there one time as a company was kind of a retreat. Okay. I think that was before your that. time. Just like uh, last week, someone from Scotland popped in. We talked about doing oh. Great Adventure Live from there. But oh. here it is, Great Adventure Week 2. This is Julie Walker, our, our Chief Marketing Officer. Here I am. And um, she will be filling in for the Andrew spot with all of the knowledge that we need to pass along and questions that come up as you all trickle in. Feel free to uh, comment either on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you are. And we will try to hit as many of them as we can as we go through the day and then follow up with any we miss uh, later on. Sure. So, Julie, um, my note says Julie who? Julie Walker. If you want to share who you are for those who are doing this the first time around. Great. But our keyword again is mastery. Mastery. Because we're also focused on those who are doing this the 10,000th 10, time. Well, around. I have not personally watch the teaching writing structure and style video course course 10,000 times but I have watched it at least a dozen times and let me just give you a little background of who I am what I do here at IEW I am the chief marketing officer I oversee all of, everything's related to marketing which believe it or not if you don't know this about marketing one of the main things you have to do in marketing is you need to have a product that is worth selling because if you don't have a product then you might as well <laughs> just stop whatever it is you're doing and so one of the products that i help to oversee the development of is our second edition of teaching writing structure and style it looks like this if you are not using the second edition where have you been <laughs> if you're using the old edition we just spent so much time improving this, so much easier to use. And even um, our conversation today, we'll be talking about some of the things that we did to make it easier for you to become accredited, which the whole accreditation program is another thing that I've overseen. I've now worked with Andrew, directly with Andrew, for 16 years. So May was my anniversary. Okay. And uh, one of the things that... I did before I was working for Andrew, I was working for Biola University in Southern California. So I live here in Oklahoma, moved from California with the rest of the IEW team. But that's when I learned about IEW. I was a classroom teacher for many years, homeschooled all my boys. I have three sons. They were homeschooled kindergarten through 12th grade. And we discovered IEW and brought that into what I was doing through Biola University in recruiting homeschoolers to Biola. Andrew liked what he saw and said, hey, you should come work for me. That's my story. Yeah. He's got a little different story. On Turn that. a methodology into products. Yes, that's what that's. <laughs> so that you can all have it yes. and do it a lot easier. Yes. Yeah. So two big, two big notches in my belt, in addition to the teaching, writing, structure, and style, is structure and style for students. I was the director and producer of that uh, product. And also every week, I do a podcast with Andrew Pudua. In fact, uh, sometimes when I'm out at conventions and such, people will say, oh, wait, wait, say something. It's the voice. Yeah. You recognize yeah. my voice. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language. Po yeah, that's me. <laughs> so we have a good time on our podcast. It is. Okay. So if um, you've heard any of the recent podcasts, I suppose this would be your live chance to chat up Julie a little yeah. bit too. Try yeah. to stay on topic for structure and style. But hello, Miss... Uh, Rocio Flores, thank you for the opportunity. I have seven children nice. and I need the motivation to get through TWS. Yes. So thank you. Yes. But you'll be all the wiser and all the happier if you do, yes. um, because uh, you learn by doing and you can even learn even more by teaching. Yes. So, oh, so yes. We'll talk about. So um, why don't we recap what we did last week with unit one, which was part of it all with keyword outlining, note making and outlines, and then a little bit of public speaking. Mm -hmm. If you want to just, I guess we could throw out the uh, um, uh, introduction to public speaking course that we just yes. started as well or just put out. Um, well, let me just say that if yeah. you want to try out our brand new introduction to public speaking, just go to IEW.com slash free speech. <laughs> Do you love that? Free Perfect. speech. That's what we want. We want to cultivate a culture of free speech. <laughs> and so there's the first two lessons. I think the first two lessons, I said three, but yeah, the first two. two lessons are available 
to you. And part of what we do in public speaking is exactly what we do in our teaching, writing structure and style, which is give the students a paragraph, they create a keyword outline, and they tell it back verbally. Read, think, look up, speak. Um, yeah, free speech done well. That's what we want. <laughs> Free speech done well and this well thought true. out. Well this thought out. Free speech. We'll okay. talk about that when we get to unit nine. Yeah. Well, okay. Of course. Yeah. 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 So note making and outlines. We did the book lice, and now you're going to be rewriting that as you get into unit two and learning how these keyword outlines become basically a retelling, uh, writing from the notes that you have in the dreaded your own words. And we're going to give you some huge tools, you and your students, little by little, to be able to do that with the stylistic techniques that is the other side of the methodology structure and style right um what um do you remember the first time that you did this i guess it was with your boys on your own first right it wasn't handed to you for a classroom um right yeah okay when i was teaching a classroom what was oh, yeah. pre even ieW sure, sure. that all so did it click with you uh right away did this make sense when you heard andrew explain it from what you were watching, you saw it live, I guess. But uh, yes, the, the the idea that this isn't, um, and I love how he says this in the seminar. This isn't the way to write, the only way to write. This is our method to be able to learn how to write well. And yes. obviously, we think it's the best way. We think write, it's the best way. But it's not the only way. Okay, right. granted. But did it make sense to you? You know, when you first heard, were you able to just bring that to your students? And oh. then what did you see happen when you did that? Oh yes, this was this was so easy and. I, I think when you're going from, and I and I like that we did this for our posters, and these, of course, are our mini posters. You could do, if you have older students, you could do unit one and the next week start right in to unit two. They they go together, they're, they're, they're together. But if you've got younger students, you just camp here for a while because that's so easy. They're still learning the stamina to be able to create a keyword outline from a source text that you provide. Oh my goodness, how do I write all those words down? Well, super easy. You just choose three key words, underline them, and then copy it. And then it becomes copy work. It's super easy. But if you've got older students, you can very quickly segue into the unit two, which is now taking just that keyword outline and rewriting. And one of the things that we do with the keyword outline, those are numbers there. The Roman numeral one is just the very first sentence. Did did Andrew talk about why he didn't? We didn't get into that last week, but you should uh, you should hit that if, because it always comes up inevitably. Yes, maybe so, not at the beginning, later on too. So I'm sure we'll mention it. So those of us are old, which means older than your students. We get tripped up over this. This is a Roman numeral one, and then the next number down is a number, rather than the letter A. Well, the reason why Andrew and actually Dr. Webster did this didn't do letters is because when you've got young students, letters become part of their word <laughs> and suddenly cat becomes a cat, you know, and that's not a key word. Uh, it's not a key word. So he went right with numbers. When we get to unit four, the Roman numeral becomes the topic sentence. But for now, it just means first word in the sentence and the second sorry, first sentence in the paragraph, Roman numeral one, first sentence in the paragraph, Arabic number one means second sentence in the paragraph. Did I say that right? I, think you got that. I, I know what I mean. I think you know what I mean. First sentence, second sentence. And so this keyword outline right here, this paragraph has six sentences because that's how many you need. That's how many numbers you need is the number of sentences in a paragraph. But when you rewrite, you're not necessarily going to have six sentences or however many there are in your source text, because you're now going to start combining sentences using your stylistic techniques. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about today is our stylistic that's techniques. techniques. All right. Because you kind of alluded to all of this, the writing from notes in session. Well, you know, we got into how this is going to work and you got right. the overview. But this is uh, the other half of what 
this is all about. Before we move on to that, though, let's hit a couple of the questions. Uh, Rocio said I had nice pronunciation, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Amy Bone Brown, the kids thought it was great fun to see mom making her keyword outline and publicly speaking it to them. So, oh, very nice. <gasps> you told back book lice that's to your great. kids. Yeah. Bravo. You can have them all sign it there. Yes, that's good. That's awesome. That. Uh, Courtney says, I am a homeschool mom, and this will be our first time using IEW. I would like to combine two of my boys, rising fifth and seventh grade. Will I be able to successfully teach them both using level B? I think we could give you a kind of general answer, which would be... Yes. Yes and no. It, but you might want to go there's down There's a, a lot of factors, yeah. So those kind of questions, contact our customer service team yeah. because... Uh, Andrew put in place uh, an incredible team, very knowledgeable, very caring, uh, very on board with the mission of everything we do that we'll spend the time to ask the right questions mm -hmm. and figure out the best plan for you because each family, each student yeah. is always going to be a little bit different. So yeah. definitely contact customer service when we're done here to talk a little bit more in detail. Well, let me just add this little bit. You don't want to overwhelm your fifth grader. Right. But you don't want to underwhelm your seventh grader. But the, you know that's why talking, but you can absolutely teach them together. Yes. When we were teaching the course, and I know you were sitting right there next to me most of the time when we were shooting, filming Structure and Style for Students, we did have that age range in the classes. We had young, struggling students and older, super sharp students who all, they both yeah. had wild success. So. Right, right. But what we're about to get to it, but the checklist is the key. Yes. Big, one of the biggest keys to all of this that we'll yes. hit in just a moment here. Um, Sharon, thanks for the um, compliment there. Uh, Veritas Christian School. I teach IW in a hybrid school, nice. and I absolutely love it. I find it difficult to do every assignment in each unit. Grading mm. takes a lot of time, too. Mm. How do you recommend pacing? I find that at the end of the year, I don't have enough time to spend on the later units, and that is what my students need most. Or right. more uh pacing that's that's another question it would depend on the courses you're using yeah. because we have some mapped out if you're doing your own thing well, we can talk to you about that so veritas definitely contact our schools division we mm -hmm. call ask for the schools division and if we don't already have an educational consultant assigned to you we'll set one up so you'll have a direct contact for the classroom setting specifically so we've got that covered too no matter where you're teaching this or how you're teaching this we've got your back Right, That's right, how we're and set up. and I and I let me just also speak to that. When I first started with IEW, and one of the misconceptions I was working to correct is the need to master the units. Mm. You, we have it's teaching writing structure and style. Right, structure is the units, and we're we're finishing up unit one, going on to unit two. Those are the units. Structural models are the units. The stylistic techniques, we're going to talk about that today. That's the dress ups, the sentence openers, the decorations. We'll get through those. The structural models, you don't have to master them. You've got to move on. You've got to move on. If you haven't mastered the story sequence chart, no problem. They're going to get it again next year. If you still haven't figured out how to, oh, I don't know, what's, what's a challenge? Uh, the topic clincher rule, that's a part of that. We introduced that in unit four. You're going to get that again in five, six, seven, eight. So there's mastery built into the structural models. You've got to move on so you can get through all nine units. And then next year, the students do it again. Different source text, more styles added to it because you want to do the stylistic techniques as mastery, easy plus one. And Don't move them on until they're ready. We'll talk yeah, about that. Yeah. And he, Andrew really emphasizes this um, in this session that you're going to watch this week, but also in a few more. So it's a huge, it's a very important concept when you're doing all of this. But the short answer is keep moving. And our courses that Julie obviously has helped put together for all of these years have found the sweet spot. Yeah that yeah. will help you do just that. And then with the tools of the methodology, the checklist specifically, you'll be able to adjust for the students that need as you go. But keep moving is the idea. Yep. Um, okay, we'll, so will we be ignoring the Roman numeral for now? In what unit do we start combining sentences? We will start combining sentences very soon, but we just have one paragraph for now. So we'll stick with that, Rosia. Yeah. Julie, I remember you from the Yahoo group, says Tanya, and I'm revisiting IW uh -huh. as an online tutor. Thank you and the team for answering all my questions when all this was new to me. Oh my goodness, yeah, back in the day. I got to actually yes. see that before it was gone, so that's, that's <laughs> fun. 
Uh, let's see, Courtney, you're welcome. Shelly, I appreciate your weekly videos. They are really helping me to stay on top of my Good. assignments. Good, that's Good. the idea. We want you, and we'll recap here, we want you to be able to do those assignments. That's watching is one thing, that's great, but you really learn by doing. And that's what this is all about. This is a skill set, writing. That's yeah. how we do this, it's a yeah. skill. So you need to do that skill so that you can empower your students with that skill. So keep moving with them and we'll be here to help you all the way. Um, let's see. Oh, I need to hear this. I got bogged down here too. Yep. That happens to, yes, many of us, Amy. It's all right. So I want to show you this tool right here. Put that right up there. That is the course completion checklist. This is actually included with your premium membership or in this handy dandy course completion packet. I'm going to show you right now. Let's see, Evan, how far did they get? You know, one, we did the book lice keyword outline and we told it back okay. with one or multiple children's signatures. Okay, so that. Or a paw print, as Andrew and said last time. A paw print. <laughs> so, Evan, could you include this as an attachment on your next email sure, that yeah, goes out? Yeah, so, yeah. this one page, I want you all by next week to print this out and check off what you've done so that you can stay stay engaged and just remember that this is the teacher training course this is not how you're going to teach your students but we want to give it all to you you're going to cover this in a very short amount of time so that you know the method so that you can deliver it week by week little by little bite by bite to your students that's right yeah so we'll send you the master checklist that you can use with all the other checklists which are in your seminar workbook which we want yeah. you to really be going through there yeah. um the idea Again, here is that we're introducing the video that you're going to watch. So if some of these things don't sound, sound a little overwhelming, Andrew will take it from here once you watch over the course of this week, right. session two, and then you know we'll set up as we continue to go through all of this and give you time to ask your questions if you have any from what we watched before. If you didn't do the assignment on for disc one, yeah, for you know that first set of videos that you watch, we call them clip one if you're watching it streaming, disc one if you're watching DVD. If you haven't done that yet, just do it. It's really easy, really fast, like almost too easy. We get that criticism sometimes. Well, yeah. I'm just gonna have wait. my high schooler do this. <laughs> just wait, yeah. just <laughs> but, enjoy the ride. That's right, and this one, this week is pretty easy too, doing the elephants, mm -hmm. but um, you will, We we, we're going to ask a lot of you by the time we get into the upper units that's for sure but you get to reuse a lot of the work that you do starting with this week with the infrasound and elephants we're so nice so, yeah. yes you have to do a little reformatting when you learn more things but for now do it right do it now and you'll be all right so the biggest point we want to hit this week is the dress ups which is the first of a few stylistic techniques yes. that we have and as you see there are a number of them that andrew will cover in the video what was your favorite to teach by the way the favorite dress up well ly because it's so it's the first one so we, we teach yeah. the the reason why we teach the ly first is ly can go anywhere in the sentence at the beginning at the middle at the end it doesn't have to sit next to a noun like a quality adjective has to mm -hmm. or i don't even know what a verb is let alone a strong verb so ly Guess what? It ends in L-Y and you've got a list of things to choose from. So that was my favorite. Yeah. And that's where we start all the students. <laughs> where we start with you guys is you got to do them all in your infrasound essay and actually in your book place. You've got, uh, yeah, you've got to do go them all. And, yeah, make sure they're all so, in there. We want you to get the experience that you're going to be doing to your students. Uh, the really exciting thing I think about stylistic techniques is, um, well, first, just you mentioned verbs now, you start to get a real natural feel for grammar right here. Even if you're not doing a formal program like yeah. fix it grammar that we offer on the side, which uses our terminology, yeah. perfect way to cover all the bases. A complete grammar um, course, absolutely. You, you get to understand in a natural way how grammar works. I think it, that's, I'm probably quoting Andrew yeah. verbatim almost for that. But um, the other side, the word style, you get to start developing well, flair, you can decide how you want something to sound. And yeah. the more you learn words and the more you learn how to use them, or your student does, the more powerful they can be with yeah. what they want to convey and how they want to convey it. So um, it's it's exciting, but don't get too excited and start bogging down because the easy plus one idea is what it's all about, starting with one at a time with your students, even though you need to work on them all so that you can keep moving through the seminar. Watch for this one right here because... 
clause, a clause by definition must have a verb. So when you put in your because clause, make sure that clause has a verb. Do not use because of. You'll find out when we do our sentence openers, because of is a preposition. Because by itself, because I was late to the party was, there's my verb, I didn't get any cake. Well, that's probably good, right? But that's a because clause, because. So just be careful with that one now. It's a tricky one. But Anderson, kids love that. Because, the kids who don't like it. My son, Robert, loved the because clause. Yeah. You'll see him the SSS. Yes, right yes, yeah. you will. So two things that Andrew says about the dress ups. Do you remember what they are, Evan? As I've of, watched it at least a dozen right. times, well, I can tell you what they are. Point. Well, why don't you, yeah. yeah I could probably say a few things. Very yeah. important things he says. He says, the first thing is I don't believe, nor do I teach, that including all of the dress-ups, all the stylistic techniques, is necessarily good writing. Right, right, right. This is how you develop skills in your students, and so that as they grow and mature, they will find ways to make their writing better using these stylistic techniques. But if they never used them, meaning you didn't even require them, I'm looking for a checklist. Do you have a checklist, Andy? Go with. Of course you do. This is a requirement. This is the 10 suggestions, not 10 suggestions, not 10, <laughs> 10 commands. This is a requirement. This checklist that you guys are doing is a requirement, but also when you put it on the checklist, you are going to require that of your student so that they can practice that specific technique. So that's the first thing he says is, I don't believe that including all of these necessarily makes for good writing. Right, right, right. It's, and I don't teach that. He says that. I don't teach that. Yeah. So we do get criticism for that. Oh, people use that, you know, those LYs, and they're just way overusing it. Okay, well, then the student just needs to mature, but eventually they're going to know what's appropriate. Here's the second thing he, thing he says is, don't do to your students what I'm about to do to you, and that's require all of them in your very first written assignment. We talked about easy plus one. For the first, for the younger kids, they're not even going to get any dress ups initially. But the second week they get, or the third or fourth week for the level A students, they get the LY. The high schoolers, they're going to get the LY and the who, which clause right out of the gate. So you just, you drip them in a little bit more quickly when they're older, but you're going to do them all because guess what? You're older. Your students, you're going to do it easier for them. So don't do your do to your students what Andrew's about to do to you. Right. And this ties into the keyword I want to use this year is mastery because mastery, the yeah. musician Great plays word. the scales. It's, this is like your sheet music. Did your you know that Evan's a musician? Somewhere. He is. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you have your checklist. You know what your marching orders are, what you have to include, even though you might not want to include it, even though it may sound a little awkward, um, especially at the beginning for all levels. But you're learning, you know, playing with language. Yeah. You're learning to use things and use them well. And then one day you do graduate from the checklist and you can use or not use anything you learned yeah. or your students can. But they know how to do it, yes. like it or not. Yeah. So Andrew will dig into all this. Let's hit a couple of comments there. Uh, Sharon loves strong verbs. Sharon in our school's division. Thank you. My child has very good memory and often his work sounds exactly like the source text. Yeah. What are your thoughts? That sounds about right. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. Don't criticize that. Just be sure that he's choosing two or three keywords and putting aside. And then once you introduce those stylistic techniques, it'll start to morph a little bit. But wait till you get to unit three and unit four. It won't sound the same anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the thinking okay. process. Yeah. And again, process versus product. Right. All our, all of these phrases that we saw, these little terms, their articles Andrew's written too, so you can jump in. Or actually, their podcasts. You do mm -hmm. podcasts on every one of these little yeah. points, so that's probably the biggest um, place to to jump in with some of this well, stuff. Well, and I was thinking about as I was knowing I was going to talk to you today. I do want to recommend that you listen to Andrew's talk, "The Four Deadly Errors of Teaching Writing." It's, it's a little hyperbole, deadly. That's not going to be. It's not going to kill you if you teach writing incorrectly. But one of the deadly errors is withholding help. We want your students to be successful, so we want to be sure that you know you don't have to withhold help. If they need help, 
give it to them. But if you've got a student that can remember photographic memory, yeah, yeah. I wish I had a photographic memory. But help for the speaking part. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be super helpful for the speaking part, right? But I will say that that's our philosophy in helping you as well. We have all levels of help for you as teachers, all the way up to our annual structure and style writing workshop that we do. Um, you know, yes, it's not going to be, I shouldn't say it that way. I should say, yes, it's going to cost you. This is completely free. Yeah. But if you want even more help, we're happy to provide that. We want you to be successful. Truth be told, we want you to complete this checklist that we're going to include in the next mm -hmm. email so that you can become an accredited instructor for IEW and then perhaps have an opportunity if you're homeschooling now, maybe when your kids graduate, I'm telling you, it happens. The kids all grow up and have kids of their own. It's very exciting. Then maybe you can be a teacher at a school sometime. We work at some of these hybrid schools that have been mentioned or just overall be a better person because you yeah. know, I went to grad school after I was done homeschooling my kids mm -hmm. and went on and got my MBA and graduated with high honors Yeah, because I knew how to write. Thank you, Andrew Fuvar. <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too never late. Never too late. late. Um, I was going to say the structure style writing workshop. I think that's what Amy is asking to link. Mm -hmm. So that's already started for this year, and yeah. it is directed toward that classroom setting it is. specifically it is. for yeah. teachers. So, I mean, you can do it if you want to. You know, if you're in a different setting, but we won't have time to field questions. Yeah, know, it's, for, it's for three days, sort of and day one is already gone. So we only yeah. have two days left. So Amy, wait till next yeah. year. Get on our mailing list. Watch for that. It's a wonderful course. But work through teaching writing structures because that's the heart of it anyway and we're watching clips throughout um for the school specifically though if you're just catching on to that uh contact our school's division because we want to help you um that's why we have we have our customer service department for kind of more the homeschool side co-op and things like that and we have our schools division so and we can give you the specific attention and right that's what i do and i'm an educational consultant with the schools division although i spent what five years with customer service yeah, that's true. um and and, and if Anybody from Evan schools, because yeah. you have like a couple hundred schools. Yeah, well, we're trying to, we're spreading out the team now. Sharon, <laughs> actually, who's been very enthusiastic today, runs it yeah. magnificently. Yeah. And um, our, um, yeah, we're reaching more and more schools, yeah. better and better. That's exciting. Um, yeah, every, every step of the way. So please reach out to our schools division um, if you are in the full-time classroom setting yeah. more than three days a week, basically, yeah. or hybrid kind of thing. Um, and let's see. Oh, Four Deadly Errors. Yes, please start with Four Deadly Errors if you haven't listened to a Pudua talk before. Did, did, did someone put the link in there? IEW.com slash FDE, Four Deadly sure. Errors. Pretty easy. But we'll to send find. that out too with, yeah. um, I'll just go ahead and put, put that, that in, in with the uh, master checklist that we're going to give you. It's nice when Julie comes because she's going to give you extra bonuses so that you'll keep on clicking and find more things you like on the website. Um, so we're kind of running along here. This always ends up being a, a lengthier one, which is fun. We could talk all day, but we should probably let Andrew um, do most of the, well, do all of the teaching for you. He's the yeah. master. So this week you will watch uh, session two, the whole thing. You'll work through the, uh, you'll finish your book life, book life paragraph and the infrasound uh, and elephants, which is interesting. You're going to start learning a lot about elephants over the course of this seminar, if you don't already. And, um, You've got uh, all of the stylistic techniques that he'll walk you through. Uh, remember, the way we're doing this to you is not the way you're going to do it to your students. All of the dress up. Sorry, not, sorry, sorry. Not, not all the stylistic all the techniques. Style. Not yet. We'll get to that. All of the dress ups. Five dress ups only. Sorry about that. Six, okay. Two, six dress ups. Two, sorry. Three, four. We do six to start. Yeah, we'll say six. Sorry. Getting ahead of myself again. We'll he hasn't there. watched this as much many times as I have. <laughs> I didn't live it either, right? You were there. It's the whole thing. Okay, so each week we have the gift certificates, oh. two $50 gift certificates cool. uh, that we uh, draw randomly from the people who sign up from the end of the previous session, or at least after I've picked the winners from the previous session, until uh, we start this one. So, so we've got, once you sign up, you have to sign up. You have week? to sign up because we want you to come back. So we want this you is come back. other come motivation back. to watch, ask your questions, do the work, because right now it's it's about as easy as it gets. It's going to get lengthier. But if you do this, you'll have some momentum going into rest week. So we have our little golden tickets here. We, Andrew, or a guest, gets to read. So Julie's going <gasps> to read two names uh, that um, win oh. two, well, one $50 gift certificate each. 
This is to Susan Waddell. Okay. She's at Valley View Christian School in Haviland, Kansas. Okay. I know of a Valley View in Southern California, but that's not this one. Okay. But that's okay. Congratulations, Susan. $50 gift certificate coming your way. So we will email you uh, your the, the uh, gift code and yeah, all that good stuff, right, how to use it. Right. And then um, Lisa Hardin, who is a homeschool mama. Good job, Lisa. Oh, in Winchester, California. So, you, you know, I recently came back from Hawaii and oftentimes that was where I was last week when you guys were all doing this. I was in Hawaii enjoying the sunshine. But they would ask, where are you from? Where are you from? And I have to remember, I'm not from California anymore. I'm from <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> and that's a beautiful place. It yes. really is. So, uh, unless there's any other big questions. Yeah, thanks for putting the links in there, everyone. Uh, Deanne's mm -hmm. going to find the four layers here. Yeah, thank you, Deanne. And um, looks like we've covered everything that needs to be asked at the moment. So Great. if you have more questions, though. Uh, and especially those specific ones with your students and your experience and all of that customer service. So 800-856-5815. Or email. Or email. Because info at IEW.com. And that right. way we can kind of work through methodically. Yeah. Uh, as this is the busiest time for people to be asking those lengthier questions. Yeah. We also have chat mm -hmm. online. That also goes for the school's vision. IEW.com slash contact hyphen us. Contact us. No, that's the phone number, the email, and then the chat for you. Thing there for you. There. Yeah. Or if you're full-time school or hybrid school, ask for the school's division when yeah. you call and get assigned to the educational consultant, and you'll have your contact all the way through. And you've got your new best friend. That's right. So last but not least, just to encourage you again, the goal at the end of this is that you finish, you have finished your practicum assignments and you have the opportunity to become an official IEW accredited instructor, which would allow you to be on our website. Um, we'll give you a little, you know, we'll give you some um, uh, badges that we, you can put on your email. So you got to legitimize your relationship with us. Um, most importantly though, you get to be sure that you grasp this, all of this, yeah. because we'll actually go through each of your practicum assignments and ask yeah. for revisions if necessary, yeah. which often happens, but that's how you learn. So, so okay. look, can I uh, give me 30 seconds okay. here? I want to tell you the whole accreditation thing. This may not surprise you at all, <laughs> but this was also something that I worked with Andrew to start 15 years ago. And here's the problem we were solving. People were saying they knew IEW and were teaching IEW and they didn't. They only did unit one and two and did a few dress ups, LYs. And oh, they're teaching IEW. Yeah. And so we said, no, we want to be sure that people like you who care about fidelity, who care about mastery learning, who want to demonstrate that they know it, that's what our accreditation program was all set up. Right. Just for you. Yeah. You're yeah. here today that's because right. of that work that Andrew and I did all those years ago. Very good work. One bonus too, if you are a school, being an IEW accredited instructor uh, would allow your school not only to be on our school's registry, we have two tiers, um, a registered school, which are schools that have trained, use our curriculum, a certified school, which uh, has accredited instructors. So mm -hmm. your school actually gets some, uh, some help there too. Yeah. And you know that you're teaching your students correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll go back on just the regular, as an individual instructor, you can be registered, which is doing all of this, or after two years of teaching this and you have some of your students work, you can become certified if you'd like. It's yeah. not required to be any of it. Do this is the main thing. But if you've done it, why not? Just yes. go ahead and become accredited. And then exactly. we're all just, we all know. So. Yeah. Okay. Where do I sign up for the giveaway? It's in the emails each week and at uh, IEW.com slash adventure. Adventure. Yeah, we're so. going on an adventure. That's we're a, on an adventure together. A great adventure. And I always say, how long have we been doing this? Because Andrew... You know, he, he cut, you set these things up, Andrew does them. So I don't think he knows the exact date. And I don't think I'm clear on it either. I was thinking it's been like 10 years. It's, it's been close on. to 10 yeah. years. And Andrew's, Andrew thinks, oh, we just started doing yeah. these. Yeah. Well, we try to like, keep it fresh. No, boss. We've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. So, and we will continue to do it because it seems to bear some yeah. good fruits. So join in the events page on Facebook as well as where you can discuss and we monitor all of that. Yeah. So if there's specific things that we need to help with, we will. So uh, info at IEW.com, adventure at IEW.com if you have some really good questions you'd like me to ask Andrew next week when he's back. Yep. Um, I think you'll probably be back with me or Nathan once or twice before the summer's done since Andrew's always around, but we'll get there as we get there. Uh, easy plus one. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Okay. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you, everyone, thank for you being everybody. here today. And uh, feel free to reach out all through the week. And we'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.